Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my brand new studio. Uh, today I'm uh, broadcasting uh, from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm broadcasting to uh, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I'm in my studio today with my wife, Gloria. Hi, everyone. And uh, she'll be monitoring the broadcast and uh, also checking the chat room. Uh, the chat room is live, so uh, uh, while, while we're on today, uh, give me some comments if you have them or some questions, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, so I'd like to know how you like uh, the program. Also, if you have any uh, uh, suggestions of things that you'd like to see, uh, I would like to hear about that. Uh, uh, my studio here, you see, uh, new, if you're new here, my studio here, my paintings will be hung behind the wall once I paint it on. Uh, there's a couple of things there I've added in here this week. Uh, off to the right here, you'll see I've got a drawing board. And uh, I have a drawing class at 2 o'clock p.m., or 7.30 p.m. Uh, this evening. And uh, what I do is I go over a, a drawing, and uh, I think it's very important. And I'll be doing a little bit of drawing today. So if you, if you want to catch up on some drawing skills and maybe do some more, more drawing practice, then check me out at uh, 7.30 p.m. this evening. Okay, Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> okay, uh, today uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, special techniques. And what uh, watercolor techniques, but I'm going to do a couple of watercolor paintings. Uh, what I want to show you, let me, let me take you to my uh, overhead camera here. Uh, as, I was jog as I was out running last week, on one of my normal runs on my routes, uh, I, found, I found this old sticks lying on the ground alongside of the road. And that was my inspiration. You saw, I said, wow, they look, they look like uh, um, birch trees. This is not a birch tree, but it said they look like birch trees. And these are branches that were cut off like just laying in the street. So I picked them up and I put one in my pocket and carried it on my hand and ran as I was running back to, from my trip. Uh, I was carrying these along with me and brought them back to the studio. So these are, this was my inspiration. I said, well, I want to I want to paint some uh, some birch trees today. And uh, well, also what I do is I try something new. Uh, in the meantime, let me put this to the side over here. Uh, now this is a, here's a reference photograph. Uh, I, we don't have birch trees around my location here. I looked around while on my runs and I looked for birch trees, but I, I don't have birch trees around here. So I have to go online or look at a photograph or something. So this is a photograph of some, some birch trees. You see the beautiful trees? And if you'll notice uh, all the white bark and everything with the, with the darkness in there. Well, we're going to paint those today. I'll show you how I do that. But also notice all the branches that go around across. Uh, there's a lot of activity there with the branches. I'll show you how I do that also. So this was a, kind of a starter uh, thing to look at, uh, this photograph here. Uh, and also I, I got another photograph. Uh, this is a birch trees uh, in the snow time with the snow. So what I thought I'd do today, I thought I'd do two paintings, two small paintings. One, I'll go, I'm going to do one here in the, in the fall, the fall scene. And then I'll do one in the winter scene with the snow. And that'll give me lots of practice to show you how I do the, the birch trees. Let me put that aside. Okay, I have my, uh, I have my drawings here. And these draw now these draw there's that one photograph, this photograph here, and this drawing, this top drawing here is in my uh, Fun with Watercolors uh, page on my website. Okay, and you can look on my website and you can find Fun with Watercolors and you'll find the drawings that I'm, I'm using here. Okay, well, I did both drawings here on, on my on my uh, drawing pad. Uh, this is the the fall scene, and down here is a, is a snow scene. So I'm going to use these, and I'm going to do a quick drawing here on my on my paper to, before we get started. So I'm going to take you over to my uh, close-up camera and uh, move over here, and I'll bring my drawing over here to me. Now here's my drawing, and I need a pencil. So what I've done, uh, this is a, normally I paint on a, a half sheet, which is a 15 by 11. So I cut this in half, so now it's seven and a half inches wide and eleven inches long. Eleven by seven and a half. And I've got I've got to cut it cut in I have it marked in half. So one one painting here and one painting down here. So I took a quarter sheet and cut it in half, so I'm using eight sheets, an eighth of a sheet of Gemini 140 pound watercolor paper. Archival and uh, it's a professional professional quality paper. And I have it on my website, everswatercars.com. All right, so what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start making some reference lines here. There's a little horizon line here. It's like a back of the trees. I'm going to start over here. 
and it's like it'll be all, like a pathway, and then that pathway is going to come down a little bit here, and it's going to curve this way out, uh, and this part of the pathway is going to come down this way, okay, along here. There's a pathway. Now I'm going to put in some trees. The biggest tree I see uh, is this one here in the foreground, a little bit here in the foreground. I'll put that right about right here. So this one here I'm going to put in, and I'll, I'm, I'm putting them in here rather lightly. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it up to the close-up camera. I'll bring it up closer after I do this, and you can see the final. But this is a sketch that I have uh, on my website, uh, and you're free to use that as a sample, or come up with your own, uh, come up with your own drawing of, of your of your trees. So this one here has to be a couple of small trees in the foreground. I'm going to do about uh, do four or five of these foreground trees, and the rest of all just be in the background. And this one here will be a different angle, a different size, you know, on the outside here. Okay, then I'm going to put a couple, uh, put a smaller tree back here, in the, way off in the background, way off in the background. Maybe a small tree, maybe a couple more. And I'll come over here and I'll start with a, uh, kind of in the middle ground of this, of this little painting, I'll put another, some more uh, middle-sized trees. Uh, just to get started here, and uh, way off in the background, put another, put another one in. I'll come forward again. Put some more. Put another tree in here. Okay. Now as I come down forward, I get a little bit bigger. So this one will be. Uh, I'm gonna put this one off at an angle. Uh, be a little different shape. Okay, and I'll have another. I have another foreground tree. I'll bring that in here. I'll bring it right on down uh, to the foreground area. A little bit larger, it's in the foreground. So uh, the larger trees versus the smaller gives you an impression of depth. Uh, the bigger trees are in the foreground. Okay, uh, so that's and I'm going to have a I'm going to have a background tree line back here. So just uh, just a reference line. Uh, all right, okay, all right. That's the first drawing. I'm uh, while I'm here while I'm drawing. I'm, I might as well go ahead and get the second drawing in. So this this one here. Uh, very simple. We're going to do a do a little uh, a little horizon line, or it's going to be on a hill. So I'm going to make a little hill here, up along this way. And it'll, then there'll be a, I'm going to start out with a tree here. Now you just saw from that picture, most of those trees are so tall, they start at the top of the paint, uh, picture, and they come all the way down. So they're, they're they're long trees. These birch trees are long trees, and they take up uh, all the paper. So this one comes down about oh, a little bit, a little bit toward the foreground, and so this one's a little bit larger, a bit larger than that tree. There's I'll put another one in here, a little bit further away. I'm, now here I'm checking distances, so my drawings, I'm also looking at design. Uh, be a small tree that's in the background, along the edge of that back hill, and then I'll bring another one over here. Just see, uh, I'll make, make a nice space in here. And bring another tree in here, maybe about right, maybe about right here. Now this will be this will be the foremost tree. This will be further ahead, so I'll make it a little bit larger, so I can have more fun with my uh, brush strokes. And then this one here will come down. And the last tree that I'll put in draw, and I'll put one right here. Now, watching the spacing, I want to. I got one, two, three, four, one more. Uh, I like odd numbers in art. Uh, even numbers are not good. So I own balance uh, my art with odd numbers. So here we'll put this one in, be a little bit larger, just in back of that foreground tree. Okay, well that's enough to get started, okay? All right. We have a comment from Alice. Excited to see the two paintings. She really likes birch trees. Yay, well I think everybody likes birch trees. I like birch trees too, that's why. When I saw that, when I saw that uh, reference uh, stick on the ground, uh, that really motivated me. So let me go over to my uh, overhead camera. Very good, Alice. Uh, okay, so looking up close now, there's my my top painting is going to be uh, the autumn scene up here. There's there's a there's a sketch, which you can download off my website. And, uh, and this is a second sketch, which I'm, is not a download, but it's a simple one for drawing the uh, uh, the snow scene. And once you see me get started on, you can come up with your own your own design. Okay, all right. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do I'm going to, now again I, I've got two two paintings here. Now to simplify this, 
I'm going to paint the backgrounds in first. And then I'll come in. I'm going to leave the trees till last because that's going to be the, the piece of resistance. Uh, I want the trees to be last. It'll be the impact I want to have. So I'll get the background and some of the, the smaller details out of the way. Then we'll go right to the trees. So first of all, let's do an autumn scene. So I need some autumn colors. I'm going to use... Uh, my two hake brushes here. Uh, this is a small hake and a medium sized hake. Uh, hake. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up, uh, I'll leave this alone, I'll wet with that one. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of here. I'm going to use uh, autumn colors. So I'm going to use my yellow orange. No, this is deep, this is deep yellow. This is yellow deep. A little bit of yellow deep. A little bit of uh, ultra, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and a, a touch of uh, yellow orange to get us started. Okay, and those are the colors I'm going to use out of my palette. All right, so the first thing I'll do, I'll take clean water, take clean water and take the, the half, the middle size uh, hockey brush, a little bit of water in it, and I'm going to wet the paper, and that'll help the, uh, that'll, and I'll, I'm not worrying about uh, taping the paper down, I'm just going to leave it loose. Uh, this is 140 pound paper, so it, uh, you can take a, a lot of water, and it doesn't buckle. Uh, if it did buckle, I'd, I'd tape it down. But in this case here, just to, just to get the painting started. Okay, so I, I wet the top half, because I want to do one half at a time. So the top half, get it nice and wet. Okay, so, I, 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 so this is a wet on wet technique. And uh, this just to help the, the paint grow. So I'm going to do it. I'll start out with the yellow ochre first. I load the uh, small, small hockey. Now when I, when I, here I'm going to take a towel and wipe off the excess moisture. So I'm just going to go in here and just get some color started. Just a little bit of color. Get that white paper. And I'm, I'm mainly, I'm aiming at the space between the trees. The negative space, which I did last week. If you recall last week I did a negative space painting. And, uh, I used a different technique there. I used uh, something else. If anybody remembers that, uh, you can refer to it last week. I did a, a negative space painting. Here I'm going to do no no uh, negative space. We're going to do a positive space today with the foreground trees. Okay. All right. Got a little bit. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, yellow deep and start putting a little more a little more color in here. So these background trees now will be uh, autumn. Autumn scene. It's got yellows and it'll be oranges. Uh, maybe a little browns. So we'll get the colors started here. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of this. Uh, now I'm going to come a little deeper now between the trees. So go back in. I'll fill in some of those uh, spaces before. Now what I want to do is uh, I, I got some. T I got some. A little bit of. Uh, got a little bit of color on that one. On that one uh, trunk. So I want. I took it off. So I just take a ta uh, paper. Paper tissue and pick it right up. And I want, I want to leave out as what that foreground tree is going to be nice and white for the birch to show off. So I don't want to get that uh, too too colorful. But this is light color. This is light paint anyway, so it won't it won't really take a lot of that away. Okay. Now I'll take a little bit of a uh, little bit of burnt sienna. I don't want to get too much on there, and I'm going to go around and just do a little bit of a uh, little bit of texture. So there's, there's leaves on the ground, so I'll put a little bit of texture here, just to get things a little bit started up here a little bit. Put a little bit of texture in the background, a little bit of color, get things started. Okay, all right, okay. That's that's the beginning of the autumn scene. Okay, and that, let that I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to do the I'm going to do the bottom one here, which is the snow scene. All right, so what I'll do now, uh, I've got to clean up my palette just a little bit. I'll take off, uh, take off some of this color. I'll take all the uh, yellow, because now I'm going to go into a, a cool scene. So the oranges and the yellows are all warm, so that's, that's the autumn colors. Now I'm going to go into, uh, now the way, I, the way I clean my brush now, I put it in the bucket, rinse bucket, and I come back and I squeeze, because I'm changing color. I'm going from a, a yellow to a blue. So I take it and squeeze the on a towel, squeeze out the water, and so now the brush is clean. Okay. So down here, uh, 
I'm gonna wet. I'm gonna wet the brush. I'm gonna wet the uh, paper again. So I'm gonna take the, uh, the middle size, okay, and it's got water on it. Now I'm gonna paint between the trees. So I'm gonna do a vertical stroke here, and I'm just painting between the trees. Leave the trees alone. So I'm just painting down vertical, doing vertical strokes with the water. All I'm doing is wetting the paper. So I'm painting down between the trunks, the tree trunks, get it nice and wet. And then I'll come across the bottom here. So I got the paint wet, I got the, the painting wet, just like I did on the top one. Do a little wet on wet technique. Okay. Alright. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick a couple blue colors here. Um, make sure my palette's clean. I always like to start with a clean palette. I don't know, some, some people, I watch a lot of artists and uh, some of them have uh, met really messy palettes. I like to have a nice clean. When I start out, I like a nice clean sheet of paper and a nice clean palette. That way I can see the colors. I can see the mixtures. And I don't get confused over that. Okay, so with the small, okay, I'm picking up this little bit of cerulean blue. And I'm going to go into the sky now, and I'm going to just now use a vertical stroke now between the. I'm going between these trees. I'm going to save the white paper uh, for the uh, tree technique at, at the end. So I'm coming down here. I'm using a vertical stroke, and I'm putting in the sky color. This is a cerulean blue, which is a nice, beautiful light blue. It's good for skies. Cerulean blue is a beautiful sky, sky color. Uh, I'm going to come down part way. I'm going to have some trees in here anyway, so I don't need to come all the way down uh, past that my little line there, which is the uh, top of the hill of the snow, snow hill. And the last little strokes here is get off the edge here. Uh, you'll see here I'm just painting down vertically, and I'm, I'm painting around the edge shapes of the trees, keep them nice and white. Okay, all right, now what I want to do for the snow, I'm going to have another blue, and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to use cobalt blue. So the sky has got a lighter color. The sky is lighter, so I made a cerulean blue, which is a lighter blue. So I'm going to go down into the, and uh, even though snow is white color, it's not perfectly white. There's always reflections from colors around. So some of that sky is going to reflect into the snow and give it a blue color. So I'm going to use that, I'll use that effect. I'm going to use blue, I'm going to use cobalt blue down here now to paint the snow color. And again, I'm going between the trees. I want to save that nice, precious white. Saving that white paper. I found out a long time ago, once you cover the whites up, it's hard to, it's hard to get it back. Once you cover it up, it's gone. So you want to save it until you, you don't need it, want it anymore or you, you, you don't need to have that much white. So save that white paper. Okay, we're coming over to the end here now on the edge, edge of the pan. I'm painting, again, painting snow. So this, this uh, light mixture of cobalt blue, a lot of water in it. It's very light mixture you can see from the palette. It's uh, just enough to turn it uh, uh, just a little bit of color on the bottom. It's not very dark at all because cobalt blue can become dark if you put more paint in there. Okay, and then I come down here and uh, finish off the edge over here on the right. I'm using vertical strokes. I'm using a hockey brush. It's loaded with the paint. And I'm using vertical strokes. Now I need a little bit more water in there. Okay, just so I need a little water just to keep the paint flowing. Okay, now I'm going to give it a blow dry with the uh, with the hair dryer so that everything's nice and dry. Okay, the hair dryer is going to go on, and uh, so at the top I did uh, basically an autumn scene with warm colors, uh, yellows, oranges, a little bit of burnt sienna, orange, yellows, and browns, which would be an autumn color scene. And down below I used two. Uh, Two colors of blue for the sky. I use cerulean blue up here at the sky level. 
And down on the, on the bottom here, on the snow, I used uh, cobalt blue. Cobalt blue was my snow color. Take a few minutes here, not too long. Okay, now I, I test the paper to make sure if it feels if it feels uh, warm uh, feels warm. I go a little bit longer, just a little, just a few more another minute. If the paper feels warm, it's dry. If it just feels a little bit cool, it means it's damp. It means it's still wet. So I want to make sure we have a nice dry paint in here. Cool. Okay, all right, that feels dry. Feels nice and warm. Okay, now, so what I'm gonna, now the next step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the background and some little details on both paintings. That way the last thing we have got to do is add the trees. So, I'm gonna change brushes now. The hockey brush did its job. Now I'm gonna go to the, uh, let's see, the top, the top painting, I'm gonna use the uh, flat. So I'm using the Holbein three quarter inch synthetic flat, which is a good, good flat brush. I have a, I have all Holbein brushes for synthetics, and I use these I use these in a lot of paintings. So I'm going to mix up. Uh, I need I want to put a darker a darker tree line. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, ultra ultramarine deep. It's a deep blue. Ultramarine deep. Uh, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. I can use that brown later, but I'll mix that up too. And then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson. A little bit of alizarin. I'm going to a nice dark color up there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, hooker's green. Because there are trees back there. Just hooker's green. All, this, all, all the green does is make the mixture a lot darker. So I want a nice dark color back there. And I'll mix, this, I'll mix the uh, burnt sienna in to give a little warmth to it. So it's dark. And it's also warm because it's autumn. So, okay, all right. Uh, let's see. I might pick a little more, a little more red in there. Okay, I have a little bit of a uh, royal blue over here, which makes it really dark. All right, that's dark enough. All right, so now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paint in the background trees. So I'm going back here now behind these uh, row of. Birch trees, I'm going to put some darker background trees, which are in shadows way off in the distance. So I'm going to go ahead and paint those in. Uh, so this, this will be the, um, the background. This will be the background shapes. So these are uh, just like a row of trees back here in shadows in a deep part of the woods. <clears throat> and... Uh, I can also, at this point here, I can also define uh, with my edge of my brush here, I'm using the edge of the brush to define the tree trunk just by using the edge. So I come along here, do the, I do the top of the trees up here in the background, show the edges, edges are rough. Then I come over here and I can define the edge of the tree trunk, which I want to preserve. Then I bring it on down. I, I use the edge of the brush. I use the corner of the brush. I use I use every part of the brush I can do. I use the big brush as long as I can. Uh, okay, and this is going to define what I'm doing. Is I'm painting now. I'm painting in between the trees now. So this is neg this is negative painting. Uh, I'm painting behind the foreground trees with a darker with a darker color. It's dark, but it's also warm. It's got a little bit of brown in it, and it's got, but it's darker. It's darker in value. It's much darker in value. Okay, then I want to come down. Now this tree line now goes gets smaller as it goes back. It's going back, way way back into the behind distance. Now there's a pathway going back there. So here I'm going to uh, indicate that this pathway behind these trees will go off into the distance. So we're now building a little bit of depth here in the in the painting. A little bit of depth. It'll be it's going to be dark value. But now these these distance trees now get a little bit smaller because they're they're behind. They're in the background. These trees are in the background. 
so it'll be smaller. And this this uh, row of darker bushes or trees is getting smaller because it's going further back also. Maybe I'll put one more in there. You can put as many as you want. I'm just going to put enough in there to indicate that that's the background uh, area. Not, not, nothing nothing uh, you have to worry about. Uh, you can put as many trees as you want. If you saw that photograph I gave you, there must have been a, a thousand trees there, uh, all, all sizes and shapes. So I simplified it by just picking a couple that I liked in the foreground here, and then uh, just indicate that the background has got trees, and in the middle ground there's trees. Uh, just kind of break it up a little bit. Now I'll make, I'll make that bush here a little bit. Let's see. Uh, okay, there's a small, these are smaller trees here. I'll bring this up just a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I like I like to put I like to paint negative shapes because negative shapes really tell you the story. There's a, uh, it it gives you uh, indications of uh, you can build the shapes. It gives you depth in the painting. Definition. Okay, now up here I'm going to make these. Uh, now the trees are coming around this side, so now we're coming a little bit closer now to the up toward the foreground. So I'm going to come around, come around the bend here, and bring in. Let's see a little more, a little more blue in there, a little more, more red. I'm going to put I'm going to add a little more color back in here just just to make it look really darker. So uh, what happens when the you know when watercolor dries it gets lighter. So you may think that you may think that you have a dark color when you start but when it dries it starts to lighten up. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going back and adding in some more darks to really push that back into the background. Now this side over here, I think what I'll do though uh, this side, I'm going, to, I'm going to take the tissue, I'm going to take up a little bit of that color. While it's still wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this color a little bit forward. And I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. I'm going to make a little more brown over here, a little more brown. Let's see here. Yeah. Well, now here's one I can use. I'll, I'll use this one and demonstrate another way of doing the same, a different tree. I'll make one positive here with, with the dark colors. Okay. you're doing that we want to send a shout out to Steve hey Steve oh I hope you're uh, feel, hope you're watching this hope you're feeling good uh, having a nice day oh okay that's one there I'll leave that one alone let's see Trying to figure out what I did. I, I covered up a tree that I wanted to leave, but I'm going to leave that alone. I can play with that a little bit. So I'm going to leave that leave that tree there. Uh, I'll bring this tree up, and make that an, another tree here. So now I'm, I'm really I'm really flying by the seat now. This one here and this one over here. I'll leave that one alone. Okay. And one, two, three. I think what I'll do though is I'll cover I'll cover this area. Uh, I'll make this all dark over here. So I'm changing my painting plan just slightly. I'm going to make this a little darker on the edge over here, just so I can take you back into the to the woods behind these trees. Okay. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to come across the, the foreground. 
Okay, uh, this, you know, when I demonstrate, I'm demonstrating a technique, and, and sometimes when you're doing the painting, it's not working out exactly what you expect to see, <clears throat> and that's okay, because uh, we're going to have fun here doing it anyway. Now, in the foreground here, I'm going to make a little bit of, this is a lighter color, uh, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna mixed in with a ultramarine deep. Uh, it's, it's to make it a lighter brown up here. This is like a shadow up here in the foreground, and this will all separate... This will also separate the two uh, poo, the two paintings, the top and the bottom. So this is really the bottom of the top painting. So I'm really kind of just uh, really quickly putting in uh, some of the shapes here. Now these are going to be uh, parts of the middle ground now. The middle ground is going to have... Uh, Leaves on the ground. I gotta leave that one alone. I gotta leave that one alone. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna go back. Now let's. I'm gonna change my colors now. I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna uh, work on the uh, snow scene on the bottom. I'll let that one dry. I'll go back. We'll go back and work on that. It's just that's fine. We need to block in the colors. Uh, I made a couple changes on the on my drawing plan, but uh, that's okay because I want it showing you the technique and how I do is more important than the actual uh, design of what I what I drew. All right, now so this one down here. Uh, okay, the middle ground is going to be another row of trees, and I'm going to use. Uh, I think I'll use the other brush. I think I'll use a half inch brush. Okay. Okay, just put a half inch brush. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put, I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of uh, Viridian U. I, there's a lot, I, you know, Holbein has 100, 108 colors of paints, and this happens to be one of them. It's called Viridian, Viridian U. And uh, I haven't used that before in a painting, but I'm going to use it now. It's going to be a really nice green, but I'm going to darken it up a little bit. I'm going to add, add that green. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine deep to that. You can put the name of the paint in the description later after the broadcast. Yeah. No, the Viridian, Viridian U is like a Viridian, Viridian is green. Viridian green is, the, there, uh, there are several things in the color spec, in this color list. Uh, there's Viridian and there's Viridian U. It's just, a, it's just the name of the paint. But it'll be it'll be in the description in the video below. I describe all the equipment I'm using, and I describe uh, all the paints, and uh, also I have links on there to my website, and uh, uh, links to all my activities as far as uh, from the watercolors and going to the Facebook page. I got links to the Facebook page where you can download your your drawing. Or your painting, and we can share it. That'd be a lot of fun if you if you do uh, if you do one of my paintings here uh, after after the broadcast, and you want to post it, you can post post it on my uh, Everswood of Colors Art Group on Facebook, and uh, that way I can take a look at it and give me a chance to make a comment and answer some questions or help you out a little bit. Uh, when I go, when I broadcast every week, uh, really, I try to help. I try to help other artists and, and other people that uh, like to paint or like to see paintings going on. And uh, if you'd like to see me do another type of painting or another subject or something like that, just just give me a just give me a quick note, give me a comment on the on the video. Let's see. I'll go ahead with this one. So I'm building a background tree. That's all this is. I'm, just, I'm putting that this Viridian U mixed in with a little bit of uh, ultramarine deep, and I put I picked up a little bit of uh, burnt sienna just just to tone it down. If you see, burnt sienna's got a little bit of red in it, so red will uh, contrast with that green. It gives it'll it'll tone it down slightly. You use the uh, contrasting colors, it, it tones down the, the color that you're using. 
Okay, now over here, and this, I'm, I mean, this is quite thick. I've got it on here really thick. You don't have to have it that thick, but I got a, a really a thick load because it'll make it nice and dark. So I'm building a little tree edge up here, little trees, little evergreens, uh, a little, little row of evergreen trees up here in the background. So I'm really setting the stage now to put in those birch trees. This is what I'm really setting the stage for. So uh, I hope you're all being patient with me, and uh, but I, I think you'll really enjoy this, the next part when I start putting in the actual trees. This is just kind of setting the stage. And I think, set, you know, like anything, setting the stage is very important. Uh, get the story straight. Uh, have a little bit of background going on. Have a little have a little stage here of what what's what location wise. It's out here. This is out in the snow, on a snow hill. The one the painting on top on, on the top there's a it, there's a pathway in the in the woods. Uh, just as the trees have turned brown in the autumn. Okay, and you can play. You can play with the tree edges and so forth. That, that that's not really that important. Just just a background, background shape there to give you something to, to look at and so forth. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do now before I leave this one down here, as far as the foreground is going to go, what I'm going to do in this one. Now I can use the uh, I can use the bigger brush. I think I'll do that. Now I'm going to get rid of this green. This green is just too. The green's taken over too much, so I'm going to take the green out. Uh, that viridian is really strong, so I think viridian is a, is a real powerful color. It's probably a, the it's probably the strongest green in the in the in the inventory of colors. I think viridian. And a lot of people use viridian. Viridian is kind of like a base color for greens. I like to mix my greens uh, with yellows and blues and so forth. But uh, you know, every artist has their own has their own reason and has their own way of expressing themselves and that's what we're doing today we're expressing uh, the way we feel about this subject now what i'm going to do now with the bottom here and my kind of middle ground foreground i'm going to build a, uh, a little shadow pattern and uh, make this look make it look like a uh, maybe some ro some rolling uh, dunes little snow dunes And on the beach, it's it's uh, sand dunes, but on the in the in the snow, I guess it's called s snow dunes, snow drifts. So what I'll do here is uh, in the background, in the middle ground, I just kind of build, kind of build a little. Now they're they're not uh, they're not sharp. I'm gonna build a little hill here, just showing a little hill. Maybe it'll go down here a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take my other brush with just water in it, and I'm going to soften the edge. Soften the edge. I want this to go away. Just want the top of it. Just want the top of it to be defined, and the bottom is going to be soft. Soft edge, hard edge, and soft edges. Now, what I also here, uh, as with everything else, uh, sometimes the color gets a little bit strong. So I'm gonna, I took the brush, I took all the water out of it, and made it, it's a thirsty brush now, a thirsty brush. I took all the water out of it, and I'm gonna pull up some of that paint, just make it a little bit less intense. Because I just want that to be a, like a faint, a lighter, a lighter value. So I'm picking up some of that paint with a thirsty brush. And I can smooth out the bottom, blend it out a little bit. Okay. I'll take this other brush that I had. And smooth that out. Okay. All right, now I can do one more. Do one more hill, I guess. Uh, do one more small hill over here on this side. So it'll come up here maybe across here. We're kind of just kind of playing with some shadows here in the snow. 
uh, and make it look like a a snow drift with a little bit of a little bit of definition in it. Now the, the key here is to make the bottom of make the top hard edge and then the bottom soft so it looks like it's a, a hill. Hard and soft. Okay. Alright, now uh, that's still wet. This one appears ready to work on. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna add in some trees up here before we go any further. I'm add in some trees. So the background trees, I'm gonna put in. Uh, I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna make them uh, white, because they're in shadow. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a uh, little bit of burnt sienna, mixed in with just a just a touch of blue, just a touch of blue, make it a little darker value. And then I'm gonna paint in these background trees. So they're in shadow. So they're gonna. They're not gonna be white like the foreground trees are gonna be. So I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make more or less make these look like they're background trees with uh, shadow. Just to indicate those trees back there. Okay. And uh, make this tree here also a little bit darker. This one here. I'm using a number 16 round, uh, which comes to a nice point, and it's it's nice for making uh, shapes like this, which are in case I'm doing trees here, tree trunks. And I'll get one more. Here's a smaller one here. So I'm kind of filling in. I'm just kind of filling in the blanks here to give a little definition here to this background. And I think that brown also. Is, uh, ties in with the black, uh, the darker background, so that it's not it's not such a contrast there. It jumps out. You want want it to kind of blend back. So having these brown, this brown color, which is a makes it look like it's in shadow. Okay. And I think I'll make one more. This one here. I think I'll make this one brown also. Yeah, make this one brown. In shadow. Okay, all right. I brush, I brush. Okay, now we're ready to make some birch trees. All right, so let me go ahead. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques here. Now this this is a palette knife, and this is a Holbein palette knife, and uh, it's it's a professional level. Uh, stainless steel, very thin. It's made out of stainless steel, and it's high-quality steel, uh, made in Japanese, made by a sword uh, uh, sword craftsman who who built who makes swords. So this is like the way this is 800 years old technology, uh, how they b built this steel, stainless steel. Now I'm going to mix up a color here. Uh, I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue. This will be the this will be the dark part of the birch tree, a dark brown, a nice dark brown. And I'm, the, you can see the consist is very. Uh, I'm not going to make it real thick, but it's going to be uh, about medium level. This the consistency of I guess uh, whipped uh, cream. Milk is too uh, would be too light, but but the consistency of white cream. And look a little bit darker, okay. I'm just trying to get in the right color, okay. Okay, now what you do, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to lay, I'm going to lay the knife into the into the into the uh, paint, and I'm going to scrape it up. I'm going to load one side. You can see, you'll see the, you see the bead on the bottom of, of the. I got to get a little more, just a little more paint in there, a little more water. It needs to be a nice, it nice needs to be a nice puddle. And it's got to have the consistency where it's uh, not too thin and not too thick. About a medium consistency. And the only way you can find out what's what's right is you just have to play with it and test it a little bit. And it should roll. It should roll very nicely over the over the palette when you hit it with a knife. And that's coming along just nice. Okay, so I lay it in. I lay it into the puddle. Lay the palette knife flat. 
pick up one edge, roll it over, and you can see the bead now on the edge of the on the edge of the knife. There's a bead of paint. All right, so I'm going to take that bead, and I'm going to go up here and put it on the edge of this on the edge of this tree up here, and, and then roll it over, and pull it. And that's going to give me that look that I want on the edge of the tree. So load up again, flat, roll on the edge, come over here, uh, get the edge of the tree, roll the knife over, pull. Okay, get some more. Lay it flat, pull. Lay it flat in the puddle. Lay it along the edge, roll the knife, pull. And with a lot of with some practice, this takes a little bit of practice, and it's uh, it's something that makes the makes that look like a birch tree bark, and that's what I'm looking for. So lay it flat in, lay the knife flat in there, lay the edge down, roll it, and pull. Okay. Now the other side, I do the same thing. I load the knife, I lay it in the puddle. And I, now I reload the other edge of the knife by tilting it. And I go on this side, on the edge, roll it, and pull. Load the knife, roll the edge, edge of the tree, roll it, pull. I'll do one more, one more edge over here. Okay, now this one over here, I'll do this, this other one, this might look a little bit, let me add it up now, let me add some more paint in here, make sure I get a nice mix. Okay, don't be afraid to use, don't be afraid to use uh, uh, a lot of paint, because you need to load up the knife and it needs to roll off. Let's try it again. I got a couple other knives that I can use also. I want to show you this. This is the big one. This is my big kahuna. So lay it flat in the puddle. Roll it up. Get one on the edge. Load the edge. Now come over here to the edge of the tree. Lay the edge on the tree. Roll it. And then pull. The other, load the other side, lay it, lay it in the puddle, the edge, of the, edge of the tree, and pull. Okay, now for these little smaller trees, uh, what I usually do is I'll just load up the knife, and I'll just go in and I'll just... Uh, just take the smaller tree. I'm just going to just tap it in and just tap it in, just very lightly, and just do a do a abstract pattern uh, along the along the length of the tree, just to indicate that you got those those dark and light spots. Load up the knife. I'm using the tip of the knife now and just dragging it across the shape of the tree. Okay, now um, as far as making branches, well, let me let me do some down here in the, on the snow. I think I might work out too. Let me do one more down in the snow. So I'm going to get. Uh, let me mix up a little bit darker. Add a little more blue to that, make it nice and dark. Okay, now I'm going to load up the load up the knife. Just put it in a puddle. Just lay it lay it flat. Load up the edge. There's a there's a bead there's a bead there's a bead of paint on the edge of that knife. Okay, then you come over here to the tree. You lay lay your knife edge along the edge. Roll the knife over, and then pull. On the other side, 
move the knife, lay it flat, move it up the other edge, lay it flat, and drag it across. Okay, now I have several other knives here. Uh, this is a smaller knife. This is probably a half as no, one third the size of that one, but it also works very nice. It's a it's a flat. The key about this is the knife has a has a, has an angle to it. Uh, it. It has a curve. Has a curve to the handle. So when you put your hand on it, your knuckles won't hit the paper. So it's very important to have a a blade that is sharp, that's shaped like that. It has an angle to it has an angle. All right, I can load this one up. Same way, lay it flat, lay it flat in the puddle, load up, load up an edge, and come over here. And load up the other side, lay it in the puddle. So what you find out is that uh, this, this is a very, it becomes a, and a, you want you want an abstract pattern. You don't want something that is planned out. It's just, it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be abstract. Uh, the shape is going to be different every time you do it. Uh, every every stroke is unique. And uh, that's exactly what nature is. It's, it's uh, a very natural look on a tree. This one here, I'm going to make it a little darker. So here I'm darkening up some of those spots. I'm going back on now. The, the original knife I did, just going back in. I'm darkening up some of those edges. That makes that makes the tree really pop out against that white paper. <clears throat> some of these smaller trees, just putting in color. I'm just dabbing. I'm just dabbing the paint on, making some color. <clears throat> now, I think one of the one of the fun things are is making the making the branches. So let's go back here to the top one again. <clears throat> I load up the tip of the brush. Now what, what I do there is just I go to the puddle and drag drag the knife in there. Load up the tip, and then I hold the knife like this vertically. And I come up here to the side and I can drag that that knife across. And there's no way you can copy that with a brush stroke. That is that's just going to be one unique little way to do that. There's no no way to copy that one with a with a brush. Go this way. Alright, load up the brush. You get your paint on the point. Paint on, on the edge and then let it roll down the point. Hold it vertically. And then come up here and hold it vertically on the on the paper, and then you, and you just drag it and do a do an irregular, what I call a zigzag a zigzag motion. Uh, now, if you saw that picture I showed you in the beginning, there were a lot of branches across that painting. A lot of branches. I'm gonna save that one for a uh, for uh, see this this one here yeah I left one here I left one here dark I want to show there's something I could share with you that I tried the other day which worked also um, if I have time to do that and same way down here with this with the bottom one load up the brush on the point and let's say I want to say I want to put a limb across here. Set the knife down in the puddle. Okay, put it, load up the point, and come over here and drag, and then drag it on the paper. And then do a zigzag motion. 
irregular motion, up and down, around. It just uh, the knife is going to bend and do its own motion anyway. But you can, you can direct it a little bit. Okay. Now another another thing you can do with a with a knife uh, is also build some. Uh, let's say down here in the bottom, I can add in. Uh, uh, strokes of grass, tall grass or weeds sticking out of, out of snow, for example. Load the brush up, get the point, get the point wet, then come down here and hold it vertically. Let's try this knife too. It's a little bit smaller. I think I need to put some more paint in there. So don't be afraid to put more pigment on, on the palette. Uh, make it a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker sometimes is better because you need to get enough paint and it'll be enough consistency on the on the tool so it'll pick it up. There's about that's about right. See, it's, see, it's just like uh, not like butter. It's almost like cream. But down here now it should go. I think that's the point there. You got to get a little more, a little thicker on the paint in order for it to, to uh, come off the knife. Come off the knife. And up here, same thing. Put, put a little a grass and up here on the, this little scene up here. Now the last thing we can do uh, to finish this off a little bit is I take the uh, hockey, the hockey brush up here in the, in the top. And I think before I do that, though, I got uh, I got to dry that up a little bit because it's a lot of wet paint. Uh, and I'll just blot it dry. I'll take the tissue, and uh, I see excess moisture up here, so I'll just blot some of that color off. It makes it lighter, but at least it it keeps, it keeps it from uh, messing up the next layer I'm going to put on. Okay, so what I do, uh, let, me, let me blow dry up for about a minute. Here, let me get Okay, so what I do with the hockey brush is I go in and uh, have a nice clean one. Now I'm going to pick up, up here in the autumn scene, I'm going to use... Uh, Yellow orange, maybe with a little bit of burnt sienna in there, mixed a little bit of burnt sienna. And, and I, then I push the knife into the, or push the uh, brush into the puddle. And now I'm going to go in here and put in some texture. And that's the leaves up there on the trees. And what you do is go around and add texture to those trees to make it look like leaves up there behind. And down here on the ground, there'll be some leaves. So go ahead and you just go ahead and kind of go, uh, no, I wouldn't say go crazy, but you know, just go ahead and be, put in all, all you want. That'll be the texture you want on the, on the ground. Go across the treetops, go down at the bottom, across the bottom. And so that would finish off the look of trees on that particular painting. Uh, down here, there's no, I'm not putting any, there's no leaves down here, so we're going to leave this one alone. Now the other thing I would do down here, one last thing, is I would take a, uh, let's see, I'll take my half inch, I'll take, yeah, take my half inch. I'm going to take my half inch uh, flat, and then I need a little, I need a little space for a puddle here, clean my palette out, take my half inch flat, it's got a lot of green in it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, just a little bit of cobalt blue. Load the uh, half inch, use, use, load up the half inch, and I'm going to put some, uh, put some shadow pattern. Let's say the sun, the sun was shining this way. There'd be some shadows falling on the ground over here. 
So you can draw you can draw shadows coming off these trees tree trunks. To give a little to give a little dimension or a little, a little interest here. You could also uh, make a little uh, indication it might be a little hill here where the shadow is falling down. And this one behind over here. This tree is casting a shadow coming through. So that'd be a nice little nice little thing to and then you can also show uh, you know tree branches over here on the right side say and th these are branches these are shadows coming from a, say a, a tree or a bush coming from over here you could add that there to your painting so those are things you can add to your design to fill in some spaces and to make it a little more interest up here one last step up here I can take this uh, I've got a mixture here of uh, Burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I can go in here. The sun's coming. I can put little shadows coming across this pathway here from these trees. So again, I can build interest across my painting by adding in a little dimensions like shadows. Now here, I'm trying to make a, one a little bit smaller than the other, which is so good. Maybe a branch over here showing off. So you can add you can add little dimensions to your, your painting to give a little more interest. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the main camera. Oh, oh! Before I leave, I wanted to show you. Uh, okay, let's put a little mat around this. I always put a mat around it. Now, even even this was even as a rough painting, this turned out you know as an. Uh, we turn it okay as a starting point, and there's a lot, a lot of work we can do to do that one. This one down here also turns out to be a nice little scene, even with a mat board around it. I did one a little bit earlier for practice, and it, it turned out, I think it turned out real good. So here's, I'll show this one to you. Uh, that one here turned out to be uh, really dramatic, nice and dark. And a little snow scene down here. A little snow scene down there turned out well. Those trees turned out. See, I really, uh, it took a little more time. I practiced. I did a little better on the tree trunks with the uh, palette knife. And so these pal the palette knife here, you know, with a little practice on a separate piece of paper, and then go to it and do it. But uh, you know, the, the palette knife does a good job on making birch trees. <laughs> That's the whole point of today's uh, demonstration. So let's go to my main camera. Hey, <laughs> okay, uh, there's always, always ways to improve uh, everything you do, and uh, there's lots of improvement on this particular painting here, but I had a lot of fun showing you, number one, uh, once you got some trees down there, was to, uh, and get the background in, that was just kind of uh, getting a start point, and then and going into building the trees themselves. Uh, the palette knife approach, I've seen several other examples on the internet. And I've done it before, <clears throat> and it is a very interesting way to do it because it gives you such a uh, uh, unique, unique mark on the paper. You can't do the same mark uh, repetitively over and over and over again. So each one is a different one. But I found it very interesting. Uh, I'm going to be back again at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, simply drawing with Everett. And uh, I'll be going over some drawing exercises tonight and uh, actually do a couple simple drawings. So, uh, the drawings tonight is going to be, I'm going to be drawing upside down, which is another way of uh, looking at something instead of straight on. And I'll go through that tonight at 7.30. So, I'll see you again next week here on Everest Watercolors at 2 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time.